Hi, my name is James Shepard, and to help me introduce this next video, I got my nephew to help me out. What's your name? I'm Braxton Ryan Walter. Okay, and Braxton has a message for all of you out there. What's your message? Um, sell, sell, sell. That's right, sell, sell, sell. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that introduction. Again, my name is James Shepard, and I'm an independent agent with North American Bank Card. Uh, the last video that I did, uh, I went through and did a um, presentation <clears throat> after the statement analysis was done. We did a presentation to the merchant, and I want to talk about what to do after that. So you just got done doing the statement analysis, then you present that to the merchant. If you didn't watch the video before this one, make sure you do. And um, at the end of that video, uh, what we did is we talked to the merchant and said, your total savings are going to be around 120, uh, I think it was 123 dollars a month for that particular merchant. Now, here's what I do once that it, once that part is over. It's very important uh, that you follow a certain plan here because otherwise you're going to let allow the merchant to do one of two things. You're going to allow the merchant either to say no, which of course is bad, or you're going to allow the merchant uh, to put you off for no good reason. Now, I don't mind being put off at all. Um, if there's a legitimate reason, but I'm not going to let the merchant just put me off because I gave him the opportunity to do so when he really is ready to purchase today. So here's how you do that. Once you get done with the statement analysis, I'm going to go back into the mode as if I'm talking to you as the merchant. Um, I would say something like this. I'd say, now, uh, uh, Rich, uh, we went through the statement analysis for you, went through all the fees. Looks like you're going to save about $123 a month, which equates to, and then I'm going to give him a percentage, equates to uh, you know 33% savings overall for your entire year. So really, if we look at the whole year, we're talking about $1,200 or whatever. I always want to do two things. When I get done with telling him the total amount he's going to save each month, I need to immediately frame that uh, in the way of percentage and also total savings for the year. So take the savings he's going to save each month. You can already have this planned out when you go back to present. Take the total savings each month, multiply it times 12, and let him know you're going to save this much uh, for the entire year and also you're going to save this percentage because it sounds better. A lot of times a merchant, um, you're only saving them 20 bucks a month. Well if you say that, you say now you're going to save $20 a month, they think 20 bucks a month, that's not worth the hassle of switching. But if you said, I'm going to save you $20 per month now uh, on overall for the year, that means you're going to save 30% on your total uh, processing expenses and you're going to save, uh, roughly you're going to save about $400 a year. Well, now all of a sudden we have something that sounds a lot better to the merchant. Four hundred dollars, thirty percent savings. That's a good thing. Twenty bucks a month, or thirty bucks a month, or whatever. That doesn't sound that good. Um, next thing we're gonna do is once we tell him that, what most salespeople will do at that point is they'll go right for the close. Don't do that. Simply do this. Just say to the merchant, "Now I've gone over everything with you, Rich. Um, what kind of questions do you have for me? Does that make sense?" You say, what kind of questions do you have for me? But then you immediately, before he has a chance to answer that question, you follow it up with another question. Does that make sense to you? And you nod your head yes, because you want him to say what? Yes. If you nod your head no and say, does that make sense to you? He's going to say no, because you're shaking your head no. So don't do that. Shake your head yes and say, does that make sense to you? When you say it that way, most likely one of two things are going to happen. Either he's going to say yeah, that makes sense. I mean, saving money is good. I just made a sale yesterday. When I asked that question, I said, does that make sense to you? The business owner said to me, yeah, that makes sense. Saving money is always a good thing. That's what she said. That's a pretty good sign. Or if something didn't make sense, they'll ask you about it. But you're not framing the question to where they have to say yes or no. You're just saying, do you have any questions for me? Does that make sense? When you do that, it allows them to ask you some questions, but it also lets them know that all you're trying to find out is if it makes sense. You're not going for the close right at that point, okay? And I will show you how I do this, but I just so you know, I never really go for the close. I just walk them through the paperwork, uh, walk them through the sales process, and if they want to stop me, they can stop me. But I'm not going to say, do you want me to sell you? And I'm not going to do that. I don't give the merchant the opportunity to say no. I just walk them through the process, and when they have questions, they'll stop me and they'll ask me. So what do we do next? How do we avoid the, the yes or no part there? What we do is, once we've said, um, now that's going to be 50% savings a year, it's going to save you $400 a year, and um, now I've explained everything to you, did you have any questions for me, does that make sense? You do that, then they say, sure that makes sense, or whatever they say. Immediately from that point, you go into the equipment, and you're going to ask them about the equipment. This is what we call in sales an alternate advance question. In other words, it's yes or yes. Either way, they answer the question I'm about to ask, it's going to be moving forward with the sale. So this is what I ask. I look at their terminal, 
And I say now, uh, Rich, you already have a terminal in place here. Um, now, do you own that terminal? And he says, yes. Now, most likely you've already found this out earlier, but if you haven't yet, that's fine. Do you own the terminal? He says, yeah, I do own the terminal. I say, well, now I can do one of two things for you, Rich. Either I can reprogram the terminal you have now, and then you just keep the same terminal. It'll take me about 45 minutes. What I'll do is I'll come in before you're open or during a slow time when it's okay with you to be down for an hour with your credit card uh, terminal. I'd be happy to come up before you're open or after you're closed, and I'll reprogram your existing terminal. Um, I could do that for you, or if you would rather, I can actually get a, a machine, a free machine for you, get it reprogrammed, and have it installed, and just swap you out for the machine that you already have in. Um, is it important to you that you keep your current machine, or do you mind if I bring in, an, or do you mind if I bring in another machine? Either way, he answers that question. If he says, "No, I like my machine," a lot of them will. They say, "Man, I'm, I'm already used to my machine. I'd really rather you just reprogram the one I have." Okay, great. That's a sale. If he says, you know what, why don't you just give me a new one? This one's kind of old anyway. I'm tired of it, whatever. You give him a new one. Uh, if you don't understand the free merchant placement, in other words, the free equipment that you can provide a merchant, you need to go through the training videos and go on the conference call that North American Bank Card offers, but you need to understand we do offer free equipment. It costs you 100 bucks in bonus. You don't have to pay $100, but you get $100 less on your bonus if you provide free equipment. So you do want to do reprograms when you can, and that doesn't mean you can't do a reprogram. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later but um, in the equipment portion of it. But just we're talking about sales here. I just want you to get to a yes. The easiest way to get to a yes, as soon as you're done with that part of the close, then you move into to the section where it's an alternate advance. It's a yes or yes question. Uh, let me give it to you again from the beginning. Okay. You're done doing the statement analysis and you say, well, Rich, uh, bottom line, what this comes down to for you, Rich, we're going to save you about $120 a month, which is you know over $1,400 a year, about 40% uh, savings on what you're spending right now with your current processor. Now, I know this is a lot of information, Rich. Um, do you have any questions for me or does this make sense to you? And then he says, uh, no, that makes sense. I'm going to save a lot of money. I, I understand that. Okay, great. Now, Rich, I got a question for you. I noticed that the terminal you have right now, it's a it's a VX570. Now, do you own that terminal, Rich? You do own it. Okay, that's great. Um, I can do one of two things for you, Rich. Um, if you want to keep that same terminal, I know a lot of my clients are happy with the terminal they have. They're used to it. They know how to work it. Um, if you want to keep it, that's completely fine. I can reprogram the terminal. It does take between half an hour to 45 minutes to reprogram your terminal. So usually what I do is I'll come in either before you're open or after you close, or if you don't mind being down for an hour or so during the daytime with your credit card machine, that's fine. I can come in and I'll reprogram it for you. The other thing I can do is I can get you a, a replacement terminal that's uh, better quality than the one you have or the same quality. You know, I'll get you a little bit of an updated terminal, have it already pre-programmed, and just come in and plug it in for you. So it's really totally up to you. Uh, what do you think on that? Do you want to keep the terminal that you have or do you want me to just bring in another one for you? When you say that, stop talking. Do not say anything. Let him think. He will realize that when he answers that question, he is accepting the sale. Okay. And that's about the closest I get to what you would call a close, is that alternate advance question. And either way that they answer it, I know I've got the business. So what you have to understand, once they answer that question either way, and they say, uh, give me a free equipment, or they say reprogram, at that point, you stop selling and you start serving. You have to stop selling right there, and you have to stop being nervous and desperate about whether or not you're going to get the sale. You are no longer worried about, am I going to get this sale? You got the sale. You already have it. So now what you need to do is you need to stop selling and you need to start serving. So here's what we do. First of all, we take out the uh, paperwork, which of course is the contract. Never use the word contract in front of a customer. You use the word paperwork. Never use the word signature. Always use the word approval. I need to get your approval on the paperwork. Now in the contract, uh, you only need to have pages 1, 9, and 10. Those are the only ones the merchant needs to sign or needs to go over with you. Now this is very important as well. The order in which you go through the, the paperwork is very important. Um, page 1 is the information of the merchant. It includes two pieces of information, actually three, that the merchant is going to be the most nervous about giving you. Number one is the tax ID number of the business. Number two is the checking account number and routing number where we have to have that because we're actually sending the money somewhere. 
Number three is the uh, owner's personal social security number. We have to have all three of those. It's required by Visa and MasterCard in order to match up and make sure this is a physical address, make sure this is the actual person that owns an actual business. So rather than having him start with page number one, go to page number nine. Page number nine has the pricing on it. This is what I always say. I do a couple things. First of all, they've said what type of equipment that they want. Then I say, okay, let me go ahead and make a note of that. You always want to preface before you take out the paperwork. When you take out the paperwork, it always is going to scare the client a little bit because paperwork means they're about to sign their life away. And you don't want them to be thinking that. So just say they've said the equipment. Uh, for instance, they might say, I'd like to for you to give me a free uh, one that's already pre-programmed. Say, okay, let me just make a note of that real quick. You pull out the contract information, which of course you're going to call the paperwork, and you take that out and you make a note of it. It's on the first page. You're making a note. Then you say this. You say now. Uh, Rich, uh, let me show you a couple things on the pricing here. I know I already went over this with you, but I did change a couple things on here for you, so let me show you that. Then you flip to page number nine, and what you do is you start up there at the top where it has all of the pricing information, and you have to go down through each item. It's important to understand in sales uh, that unless you go through each item that someone is looking at, they're going to be feel skeptical about you. You can't skip over a fee. Even if that fee does not apply to them, you have to talk about each one of those fees. So in the next video, we're going to start with page two of the paperwork, and I'm going to show you how to go through the paperwork with the client seamlessly, where they're not going to have any reservations about signing it once you're done uh, going through and getting all the information from them. So tune into the next video to see how to go through the paperwork get the sale wrapped up and uh, ready to key into ELAP online.